All right, so in this chapter, um, there's a lot more in the book than we're going to cover, obviously, just like there is in most chapters. Um, but we're going to talk about um, basic memory. And in some of my, um, what I call my learning strategies lectures um, in past quarters, I have talked a little bit about um, memory and space retrieval and that sort of thing. So if you've listened to those lectures, of course they were optional, but if you've listened to them, none of this will be new information to you. So your brain has already been primed for learning this information. How cool is that? So only one learning objective. I want you to be able to define the three types of memory and give an example of each. So at least three different types of memory exist, but we're just going to talk about these three. Um, working memory, which is temporary storage and manipulation of information, and that's where um, I say, um, oh, could you uh, give me your phone number so I can call you later? And you say, oh, 206-125-3897. Uh, and I have to remember 206-125-3897 and get in the time it takes me to get it into my phone or write it down. So that's that temporary storage. And it is temporary. It's not been encoded. And um, you're, if you don't take the time to encode it, you're not going to remember it later. Um, and working memory is functions in um, sequencing motor skills and that um, too, remembering what you just did and what you need to do next. Um, so working memory is um, something that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Declarative memory is um, facts, events, concepts, and locations. So all the stuff you learn in school, that then you have to um, revisit on an exam. Um, the, that's all declarative memory. So the functions of the localized areas of the cerebral cortex and the disorders associated with them, um, any of that stuff. Uh, when your lab weekends are and um, where the building is, that's all declarative memory. Um, procedural memory is knowledge of how to do actions and skills. So all the stuff you're learning in lab um, is procedural memory. And then when you take your practical, you're using procedural and declarative and working memory to um, perform on that practical. Pretty cool, right? So working memory uh, maintains goal-relevant information for a short period of time. Um, it's essential for language, problem solving, mental navigation, and reasoning. And just like language, like having a conversation, you have to remember what you just said and what the other person just said too, so uh, really important. Um, it's important for complex mental multitasking um, because Complex mental multitasking requires working memory, and it's central to cognition. So the prefrontal cortex and the temporal parietal association cortex maintain, manipulate, and update information in working memory. Um, do you need to remember that? No, you don't. You can just stick it in working memory. Declarative memory refers to recollect it, rec blah, 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 can't talk. Recollections that can be easily verbalized and are also called conscious or explicit memory. So declarative memory requires attention during recall and has three stages. So you have to encode the memory, process that information into a memory representation that's going to be stored. Um, you need to consolidate the memory. You need to stabilize it and then you need to retrieve the memory. So this is what I've been on about since day one with that spaced retrieval pr practice. So spaced retrieval practice, you encode it, you wait some time to allow time for the neurons to um, process that information into a memory representation. You revisit it to stabilize the memory, and then on the exam, you retrieve it. So declarative memory, that's our exam taking memory, and we need to pay attention to those three stages. So um, two types of declarative memory, it's like subcategories. Episodic memory is a collection of specific personal events, including who was present, where and why, and when each took place. So that's like, oh, remember the time when we went down to the lake and um, we were supposed to, everybody was supposed to bring something for lunch and we all ended up bringing the same thing. 
That's episodic memory. You remember who was present, where, why, when each took place. Semantic memory comprises acquired common knowledge, not based on personal experience. So a lot of the um, stories and whatnot that I've told you um, in lectures and in lab, um, they're not based on your personal experience, they're based on my personal experience, but you've acquired some common knowledge based on that. There's also um, normal common knowledge that um, just knowing the context of things, um, you can sort of get by in day-to-day -day life. That's your semantic memory. So the failure of declarative memory, so a basically a declarative memory disorder, is called amnesia. Amnesia is the loss of declarative memory. So retrograde amnesia is the loss of memories that occurred before the trauma or disease that caused the condition. Anterograde amnesia is loss of memory for events following the event that caused the amnesia. So concussions or mild traumatic brain injuries can cause retrograde and anterograde amnesia. Um, I've talked with people who had a concussion event um, in usually sporting related and sometimes they didn't remember they didn't remember things immediately around the um, the trauma they also didn't remember the three or four days before it so it got knocked out of their brain well it really it interrupted the encoding process <laughs> is what happened and tarograde amnesia the encoding process is impaired and so you can't remember events that follow the event that caused the amnesia procedural memory refers to the recall of skills and habits it's also called skill habit non-conscious memory or implicit memory um, it includes perceptual and cognitive skill learning perceptual um, skills include object pattern and face recognition practice is required to store procedural memories so that's why the things you learn in lab you don't just go through it once and you go oh, I got it you practice so you can store those things so um, there have been three learning stages identified for learning motor skills cognitive associative and automatic so obviously cognitive is the first one where you go ah, I think I understand how that works associative is where you connect the cognitive with the physical memory and then the automatic is where you have it down okay Dementia um, tends to occur later in life. It is, it's a memory disorder. It's um, generalized mental deterioration characterized by disorientation and impaired memory, impaired judgment, and impaired intellect. There are lots of causes of dementia, including Alzheimer's disease, which is um, the, you get actual physical deterioration of the cerebral cortex. Diffuse Lewy body disease, it's also known as Lewy body dementia, and it's a um, breakdown of some of the structures in the brain. Parkinson's dementia, which is um, late stage Parkinson's, um, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, and multiple, multiple infarcts, so lots of different um, damages to the brain can cause dementia. Alzheimer's disease causes progressive mental deterioration consisting of memory loss, confusion, and disorientation. Typically, the symptoms become apparent after age 60, although there is such thing as early onset Alzheimer's. Death frequently follows by um, 5 to 10 years, so not a really good prognosis. Um, people with Alzheimer's disease become lost easily due to what's called motion blindness not really blind to motion, but you cannot attend to it. You lose the ability to attend to that sensory information. Um, another difficulty experienced by almost 40% of people with Alzheimer's is uncontrollable emotional outbursts. So initially the, the disease presents with signs of forgetfulness, progressing to an inability to recall words, and finally a failure to produce and comprehend language. So um, it's, it can be devastating, definitely. Um, so a little bit of forgetfulness is normal. Um, the thing that I've heard is 
If you forget where you parked your car, that's normal. If you forget that you have a car, that's Alzheimer's. <laughs> so um, normal forgetfulness is that you just didn't encode something into long-term memory. Um, but um, serious forgetfulness um, can be signs of something more serious. Whoops. <laughs> I got right out of the slideshow. Okay, so frontotemporal dementia is caused by atrophy of frontal and temporal cortices. There are two subtypes, primary progressive aphasia and behavioral frontotemporal dementia. The behavioral variant affects frontal lobe and anterior temporal lobe, interfering with social cognition and behavior. Um, a person with this disorder may impulsively commit antisocial or criminal actions. Yikes, right? Um, Parkinson's dementia primarily affects goal-directed behavior and causes um, hallucinations and delusions. Um, it can be um, a side effect of long-term use of some of the Parkinson's medications as well. There's one of the Parkinson's Plus syndromes that's called progressive supranuclear palsy um, that interferes with the speed and quality of thoughts with goal-directed behavior. Um, PSP is caused by um, breakdown of tau proteins, which are um, structural proteins in the brain, and um, so it affects a lot of different areas. Um, Lewy body dementia or diffuse Lewy body disease can cause progressive cognitive decline, memory impairment, deficits in attention and goal-directed behavior, and visuospatial ability. Um, I've worked with a few people with Lewy body dementia, and um, one person that I worked with who gave me kind of a, a lot of great information, um, he, he was telling me about how when, when he first, kind of his first signs, he, he didn't recognize his wife. Like she visually looked the same to him, but it, it didn't seem to him to be his wife. So he, he felt uncomfortable, like, well, there's somebody I don't know in the house. And, um, and it caused some um, psychotic symptoms. And then he went to a neuropsych evaluation, and he said the neuropsych evaluation was one of the most grueling and difficult things he's ever done in his life. Um, some of the um, antipsychotic medications were really helpful to him, um, but it's progressive, so it gets worse and worse. And you could see it over time working with him. Delightful man.